The U.S. House of Representatives is moving ahead with plans to oust President Trump from office, accusing him of inciting last Wednesday's deadly riot at the Capitol. Democrats are looking at two options. The first option they are considering is impeachment, a lengthy process that would need to be completed in just eight days. They are also pushing for Vice President Mike Pence and the cabinet to act by invoking the 25th Amendment to remove the president. Joining us now to talk more about this is CBS News political contributor Molly Hooper. Hi, Molly. Great to see you. So what do we see from lawmakers today and what can we expect from them tomorrow as they continue to push to remove this president one way or another? Well, today we saw sort of the initial steps taken to ultimately vote on a resolution, as you described, um, a sense of the House, really, that the vice president needs to intervene, convene the cabinet, and essentially take a vote to say, to declare that the president is unfit for service and the vice president's taking over. But that's probably not going to, I mean, it, it probably will succeed in the House, but as to how many Republicans will join on, that's another question. And again, the resolution that the House will vote on today, it simply is a resolution that expresses a sentiment on behalf of the House of Representatives. It's not binding. However, the impeachment resolution introduced by Ted Lieu, David Cicilline, um, that's a little different. That's a privileged resolution that was introduced citing um, the president's incitement of an insurrection as a reason to move ahead and impeach him. And there's a, a several ways that the House can deal with questions of impeachment. And it looks like the House is going to expedite the process and take this up as early as tomorrow as well. So the last time President Trump was impeached, the process took weeks. With just eight days left in his presidency, what will the process look like this time around? A lot different. And I mean, it's essentially you're dealing with a situation where members have the evidence they say they need to move forward with impeachment. They have all those videos from rioters inside the Capitol. They have the president's rally on the mall essentially saying, hey, I will walk with you up to Capitol Hall. We got to take it to these lawmakers. Um, and, and so they say that they have enough evidence. They can move forward quickly, which is why the Democrats are allowing this process to essentially bypass the House Judiciary Committee that whole lengthy investigative process we saw last go around and move forward quickly to the House Rules Committee, which is essentially the gateway to House floor votes and debates. And the, the Rules Committee could take that up tomorrow morning and we could see a vote on the impeachment resolution. As I said, it could happen as soon as tomorrow night. And what kind of support is impeachment getting on the Republican side? We've heard reports that the guidance Republicans are receiving is to vote with their conscience. Right. This is one of those votes that's very difficult for a lawmaker to take because it obviously is a very serious vote. You're voting essentially to remove the president from office, but not just remove the president from office. What this resolution would do is it would prevent the president from ever running for office and holding office in the future, which is one of the reasons why Democrats are so keen to, to move forward with the process. And when it comes to these Republicans, they aren't, even though what, what, what happened on Wednesday, last Wednesday, was terrible, and it was destructive, and, and many of them were actually, you know, were on the opposite end of these rioters, they aren't sure that these, these charges quite raised to the level of impeachment. And so, you know, even at a time when it does feel like there is such a conflict between the executive branch and the legislative branch of government, we've had several Republicans who, incidentally, opposed those GOP objectors last week on Wednesday um, to the Electoral College votes, these individuals wrote to President-elect Biden and said, you know, we the Constitution does not envision impeaching a president without an adequate, they say, an adequate investigation and hearings, and it should not occur in the heat of the moment, rather after great deliberation. And they ask the vice, I mean, the vice president, the former vice president, current president-elect, that's going to be fun to say. Um, they say, in the spirit of healing and fidelity to our constitution, we ask that you um, request of Speaker Pelosi that she discontinue this effort at impeachment, because they say what, what will happen is it will just further create division in this country at a time when really what we need is unity. And so... 
I'm not sure how well it will be received if, when the Democrats move this forward, only a handful of Republicans are on board. Because part of the reason the legislative branch is, is in this situation is because members of Congress have been so disunified over the past few years. They've, they've been on Twitter. They've been, been at each other's throats. They've been tell, calling each other terrible names. And, you know, there's, there's some in the, in the legislative branch that say, listen, we need to put this aside, move forward, and find a way to come together. And, and moving an article of impeachment right now is not the way to do it. So then let's get back to the other option that uh, is on the table. The House Rules Committee met to discuss invoking the 25th Amendment. Um, apparently, the meeting was very contentious. Uh, Molly, maybe you can tell us more, with Republicans opposing the proposed resolution, calling on Vice President Mike Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment. Um, tell us why they're, they are so against it. I mean, obviously, it's never been used in this specific capacity before, right. um, but what are their objections? Well, their objections are, are partially constitutional. They're saying, listen, the way that the, this is envisioned in this 25th Amendment, it's up to the executive branch to take, it's up to the vice president in his best judgment to take control and do what he needs to do. And a lot of Democrats to this point have said that Mike Pence has shown great judgment, especially in how he handled the situation last Wednesday, um, presiding over the Electoral College vote certification. And so Republicans argue, well, if Mike Pence, the current vice president that Democrats have say they trust his judgment, if he doesn't feel that the action of, of actually invoking the 25th Amendment is in order, then maybe we should just listen to him. We have eight days more. Let's move forward. Let's stay unified. Let's, let's unify as opposed to, again, drawing further divisions that are already, you know, these fissures that are already um, present in this political system. So they're, they're asking for unity and, and deferring to Vice President Mike Pence's judgment, as opposed to moving forward with the resolution that will put all, re all of the members of the House on the record as to, to whether they think the vice president should weigh in or not. And these Republicans are arguing that really it's up to the executive branch to handle their business. We don't want the executive branch to deal with our business. Let's not deal with theirs in this instance. And so that is one of the arguments that the Republicans have been making. But at this meeting today, at the Rules Committee meeting, we saw, we saw the debate sort of branch out to the Democrats' request of Republicans like Jim Jordan. Well, can you, if you guys want unity, you need to get out and tell your supporters that this election was not stolen. Until we hear you say it was not stolen, your supporters will continue to believe that it was. And in fact, Vice President Joe Biden, President-elect Joe Biden, was elected the president in this past election. And so, again, that was a common refrain we heard from Democrats pressing Republicans on the committee to tell their supporters that, that the election was fair. And it's kind of interesting because um, several weeks ago when the House was coming to get sworn in, they were coming to take their, take, take their jobs, you know, take their oath of office. Chip Roy, one of the Republicans who act incidentally wrote the requ this letter uh, requesting the impeachment uh, proceedings go away, he actually got up and said he contested um, the, the certifying or the swearing in of, of representatives from those six states that, you know, mm. that there was some question that the, the electors, that the lawmakers were going to contest last Wednesday, you know, to get everybody on the record that they were, in fact, elected duly, and so the election was fair. And only two people voted right. against moving, you know, against that. And so, so it, it's, it's kind of interesting, the, the dynamic up there. But, um, you know, I think over the next few days, we will see the impeachment proceedings move forward, as well as this resolution with uh, calling on Mike Pence to um, invoke the 25th. But it's, it's hard to see oh. if that even goes anywhere. Right. Molly, one of the questions that I feel like Republicans or congressional Republicans have to ask themselves if they, you know, they oppose the 25th, they oppose the impeachment proceedings. Is there any censure that they would approve um, for the president? Is this allowed to just go away, right? I mean, so right. it, on, on the one hand, well, that is a it's good almost question. as if, right. well... Because Democrats could very well introduce a resolution to censure the president. And that is something that was discussed, but, you know... <sighs> A lot of lawmakers were just so moved after being, again, on the opposite end of the, these rioters 
and just the affront to democracy that we saw take place um, last week that they think nothing short of impeachment proceedings will really adequately get to the matter of what needs to take place, that the president should not be in office if he is inciting an attack on the legislative branch of the government. And so, you know, unless the Democrats move forward with the censure resolution, I don't think we will see that on the House floor. All right. Well, Molly Hooper, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you.